should just poof, just disappear without a trace. Carol's Let's go speed. ahead and put the pieces together and figure out what caused the downfall of Miss Carol Speed. And y'all already know, it's just a scandalous thing, child. Let's get to it. I'm not sure what's true or false in this video. I take gossip and tea and... This is from a YouTuber uh, called uh, Ashley Says So. Uh, check out her YouTube channel. She's talking about a writer from Hollywood back in the day called Carol Speed. Let's get into it, guys. I'm going to come back, come back with my reaction. Hit that thumbs up button. Ann Stewart, a.k.a. Carol Speed, was born March the 14th, 1945 in Bakersfield. Oh, shit. She put the damn thing on that. Because it's crazy. How do we do it? Re redo it? How do we do it? Because she got the thing on her side. Let me see. Yeah, it looks weird. See, you got to move this over to this side. Uh, shit. I don't know why she put it like that. Can you? Is it still recording? Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to let it ride. Fuck it. Whatever. All right, guys. Thank you. Thanks for bearing with me. Let's go ahead and continue on. California. Her mother's name was Cora Valerie Stewart and her father's name was Freddie Lee Stewart. And moment. along with Carol, the Stewarts were said to have had at least three more children. And all of these children, along with the Stewarts themselves, uh, were said to have lived wealthy. And so hmm. back to Carol, she was brought up in immense comfort, you know, and she also was able to match the <clears throat> prosperity of the white children that she lived around, especially when the family moved to San Jose, California. Gossip claims it was here that that Carol decided that she wanted to go into acting at 12 years old. And she immediately snagged her first role in a big production of The King and I. And it was also around this time, oh, wow. 12, 13 years old, that she started a, a music group with two of her cousins. And so as you can hmm. see, Carol was definitely a child that was brought up uh, believing that she could do anything. The folks say that she went to a school that was majority white and Carol quickly became the most popular girl in school. She hmm. was voted best all around of her her senior class she even was the homecoming queen the first she's very pretty very pretty young lady hit the thumbs up button black girl to do it in her whole county so carol was pretty much a star you know everybody told her so she always excelled at everything whatever she wanted she did and on one side this was a great thing but on the other side this type of behavior or achievements caused a really big ego boost you know mm. you sometimes start to expect people to just give way and almost worship you or admire you mm -hmm. and so sometimes when that admiration diminishes things can go bad because that person's mental state possibly can't handle it. And mm. this may be what happened to Carol Speed later on in life. But to finish talking about her early years, after she graduated high school, she began singing background for a singer Bobby Gentry. And for a second there, you know, she was in limbo. She didn't know whether she wanted to sing or act. And then suddenly she decided she wanted to be an actress. So Carol hit the ground running, baby. I'm talking about she didn't take no acting classes. She didn't try to get an agent. She didn't do anything she basically just hit the ground running going up to the studios telling them hey i want to act what can i do and i kid you not guys it was almost like hollywood had been waiting for carol speed to show us her very it's like it's funny back in those days i'm thinking this took place what in the 60s back in those days you just could just go up to a studio and just hey i want to be an actor you know okay come on in go around the back take a picture of you you know what i'm saying you just could do that you can't do that no more first role of doing anything was on the hit show Julia. And yes, her role was kind of minor, which was the character Clara Dorman, but still, your first time acting and you book a show like Julia? And after Carol booked Julia, the roles just kept coming, She's honey. She also had a role in Days of Our Lives. She appeared in The Psychiatrist, one role that a lot of you may know. She looked like Kimberly Elise. I was just, I was trying to figure out who she reminded me of. Right, it like Kimberly Elise right there. I thought that was Kimberly Elise. Know her from? Hit the thumbs up button. Was when she appeared in Sanford and Son, and she left Lamont at the oh, altar. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was her. Just some of them. She was in a multitude of commercials, and she made a seamless transition from TV to film, with her first ever movie being called The New Centurion. And Carol hmm. showed out in that role. Her ability to play a grimy prostitute led directly to her being cast in the next movie she got, which was a movie called The Big Bird Cage, where she starred alongside Pam Greer. And baby, when I tell you oh, Carol yeah. couldn't stand Pam Greer, baby, I mean she couldn't stand wow. it. The folks say that she's 
spread rumors that Pam Greer treated her and the other black actresses like they were beneath her. Said that all of the other black actresses would all get together, hang out, have fun, and Pam would never hang with them, but she was always up to hang with the white actresses. And then she did a lot of insinuating, basically saying that Pam Greer was messing around with the actor Sid Haig that starred in the movie. And baby, these are just some of the things she said about Pam Greer. Trust me, as we get deeper into the video, there is plenty more. So after this movie, The Big Bird Cage, Carol You know what? I can see that. A young Pam Greer. I can see her, I mean, I don't know about the other stuff, but I can see her not wanting to hang out with, hang out with the black girls and wanting to hang out with the, uh, with the white girls. I don't know. I, I can see her doing that. But maybe not. I don't know. Maybe she was just hating on her. On the up. <coughs> media machine agrees with her and so slowly but surely they start to push Carol out front. She appears in several magazines you know they start to rant and rave about her beautiful face her fabulous figure. They opine that her acting talent is just amazing you know they're coaxing oh, the public her? to fall in love with her like they've done with every star since and before. And so it's very clear that Carol Speed was poised to become well, was one of the next or the yeah. next Next big black Hollywood actress of the 70s. But after her next movie, for some reason, things just started to go wrong. And that next movie was a movie called The Mac. And it's crazy because the role that Carol snagged, which was the role of Lulu, truly was the role of a lifetime for somebody in her position. You know, she was Lulu, the one hoe in the movie that everybody felt sorry for. Mm -hmm. Especially <laughs> in her main scene, when she had her eyes full of tears, begging Goldie <laughs> to be her pimp. All the while Goldie is telling her, well man, why do you want to go in this direction? I've always thought of you as being a big time lawyer or a hot shot nerd. And Carol or AKA Lulu breaks down even further and she tells Goldie, you know, hey man, dig this. It might have been that way if I was white. You know, that might have been cool, man. But I'm a black girl out here. They ain't jiving with me like that. You know, it was mm. a really sad moment, a really sad role because that mm. probably was the reality for a lot of black women, especially in big cities back then. And yeah. then when her storyline came back around and did the full circle moment when Goldie, the man she had been begging earlier in the movie to be her pimp, and the man who had been trying to divert her from that lifestyle, right. now was shown on the screen slapping her down viciously because she didn't have his money. So her role was so important that it was really needed to even show the evolution of Goldie's role, the star's role. But even more than that, she had the distinction of being the woman who was on the screen uh -huh. with Goldie when the song, uh -huh. I Choose You. In any timeline, at any place, when they hear this song, if they have seen the Mac, publicity you could not buy guys and you know it may not mean much to you guys I don't know if y'all are pumped up like I am you know but when it comes to acting and in Hollywood this is huge as a matter of fact and it's the last thing I'm mentioning let me give a testament just how embedded her role was into people's brains. Her role, Lulu, her character, was the one that Gina was referring back to on that episode of Martin. Really? When Gina was sitting up there like, oh, oh, I need a man. I want a man. So that's what I'm saying. <laughs> this lady had oh, not even some... been really acting for a full year and a half and already had a building block that was just... You. And maybe if this was the only thing that happened for Carol uh, when it comes to the movie The Mac, maybe everything in the rest of her life would have went fine and just like she wanted it to go. But unfortunately, there was something else happening on The Mac simultaneously. And this right here was taking place behind the scenes. And what was happening behind the scenes were the fabulous Ward brothers. Five oh, brothers. Drew, Charles, Willie, Frank, and Ted, and allegedly all of these brothers, especially Frank and Ted, were the epitome of macking. They were the epitome of pimping. In fact, oh, really? the movie The Mac is alleged to be based on the experiences of the Ward brothers. Some huh. people even go as far to say that the Ward brothers are the ones that finance the whole movie. Really? Uh, but of course, that right there is its own deep dive, and we're not going to do that right now. But we are going to do a semi-deep dive on one of them. The illustrious Mactastic Frank Ward. All y'all doggone wigs be snatched back if that man walked in the room. He said that he was so smooth the women couldn't resist him. Not just the women, the cameras mm. on the movie The Mac 
couldn't even resist him. He that high yellow one doing the most every time the camera passed him by. Oh, that was... Rumor has it, Carol came to the set of the Mac all professional and ready to work and would even sometimes bring her boyfriend up to the set. But then Frank smiled in Carol's direction. From that moment on, Carol was crazy over Frank. Baby, oh, she was boyfriend. leaving the set with him every single day. Uh, gossip claims that she even started to talk about kicking her boyfriend out of her apartment so she can make room for Frank to move. Damn. In. Carol had <laughs> fallen under Frank's spell and this started to worry other cast members of the match. If she was to fall up under his spell and start going to turn tricks for this dude, then how were they going to finish the movie? And y'all might... She was really talking about, she was uh, 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 on her way to become a big actress and she thinking about selling her body to a pen. <laughs> this is crazy. I think I'm talking far-fetched. Baby, I am not. Mm. Max Julian even put out a statement saying that he was scared that Frank was basically going to turn Carol Speed into a prostitute. So Carol is with Frank, but on October the 9th, 1972, at around three o'clock in the morning, Frank ended up going to a nightclub called the Chicken Box. While he was sitting in the parking lot talking to several friends, a woman by the name of Blanche pulled up. I don't know if she was one of his many girlfriends or one of That's his her? girls that was on the stroll or one of his boosters because he had those ladies that stole from him. But whatever the case, he allegedly left his car at the club and he got inside of the car with Blanche and they drove off. Blanche. Well, around 4.30 a.m., Blanche and Frank were parked on the side of a curb in a neighborhood and a car pulled up beside them. The folks say that somebody got out of that car, went straight up to Frank's side, which I'm supposing was the passenger side, pulled out a gun and put it to the back of his head or right behind his ear like that and they pulled the trigger. Whoa. So they shot Frank dead. They then turned the gun on Blanche and they shot her in the head also. Oh. However, Blanche did not die straight off. After the guy jumped back in the car and drove off, Blanche actually got out of the car and she ran up to uh, the person's house, whose ever house that was, and she banged on the door asking them to get help. They did get help and Blanche ended up passing away oh. in an ambulance on her way to the hospital. Yeah. Now, of course, news spread of Frank and Blanche's murder like wildfire. And that's when wow. people started to feel like it was Huey P. Newton, the leader of the Black Panthers, who put a hit out on Frank what? and had him murdered. Some people what? It was because the Black Panthers did not like the pimping lifestyle. You know, they didn't feel like these guys should be doing this to black women. And then another rumor says that uh, Huey P. Newton killed Frank because allegedly mm. Frank owed him a large sum of money and Frank would not pay it. I have no what? idea what was the this in was, but the man was dead and at the early age of only 32 years old. Oh, and the wow. folks say his death just about broke Carol in half. She wow. went absolutely berserk, oh, so him. much so that she had a nervous breakdown. And at first, it really wasn't affecting her career. I mean, Carol honestly just kept on climbing after the match. She ended mm. up getting a role in a movie called The Black Samson. She also ended up getting oh, a role in, in a movie called The Dynamite Brothers. But her next movie was Dynamite supposed Brothers. to make her a superstar. And this movie was called Abby. Now the fun stops. Oh, I, I remember this movie. Hear me, demon. She supposed to be like that. Possessed. I heard about this. I remember this movie, yeah. Baby, I don't know if y'all laughed at that part, but that part took me out, honey. So anyway, <laughs> the movie did get completed, and Carol and everybody else were excited for the movie to release because it was supposed to be a huge box office hit. And when the movie was released, it did do very well. But unfortunately, that was only for about two weeks before the whole movie was pulled from theaters and everywhere else because the movie was sued by the creators of The Exorcist, really? who basically said that the movie Abby was just a copy and a remake of their Ooh, movie. This so idea this was a major, <laughs> major blow for Carol Speed. This was something that she was really looking forward to the thing that was supposed to make her a star and with that being snatched away from her and also with the stuff that happened to her a year before with Frank Ward and her the white folks in Hollywood was like no we steal y'all ideas y'all don't steal our ideals that's how that works y'all come up with some original and we'll steal it y'all don't steal from us <laughs> That thumbs up button. Mental breakdown. Carol just did not know how to deal with this stress. Everything in her life had always come very easy to her. Mm. Well, now things were getting challenging. So gossip claims Carol was upset that other people's careers were still going well. And so Carol decided to blow everybody's hair back, baby. 
And that is when she she decided to write a tell-all book about the comings and goings of Black Hollywood. Mm. And the book was called Inside Black Hollywood. Now, when Carol first came up with the idea to start writing the book, she was dating Diane Carroll's ex-husband, Monty Kay, and he was telling Carol that it's just not a good thing to do. And she broke up with him. Richard Pryor was so nervous about what she was going to say about him that he invited Carol to his house. And he and Rosalind Cash allegedly both try to talk Carol out <laughs> and gossip claims that Carol told them that they could stick it where the sun don't shine because she had a right to talk and tell her story just like everybody else. And honey, I tried this? my best to get a copy of this book. In fact, there was only one copy that I found that was available and that was somebody selling it on eBay for $190. Oh, that's crazy. And I just was not willing to yeah, pay. But even though I was not able to get the full book, there are several snippets online of some of the things that Carol was talking about. And even though she used aliases and changed people's names in this doggone book, Baby, everybody knew exactly who she was talking about. And one of the first people she was alleged to go after was actor Max Julian, but gossip claims Mm. that she called him Henry in her book. And the folks say that she was saying Max was a narcissistic, arrogant asshole and said that during the whole time on the Mac, he was trying to get her fired because he was upset that his girlfriend, Vanetta McGee, wasn't cast in the Lulu role. Rumor mm. has that she also had a few choice words for his girlfriend, Vanetta McGee. Gossip claims that she implied that Vanetta McGee was a bitch, that Vanetta McGee was stuck that. up and she was ditzy, and that Vanetta that. McGee could not get a role if her life depended on it. <laughs> Basically, she made it seem like in order for Vanetta McGee to snag any roles, Max Julian had to kind of go to bat for her. Ooh, then child, Gossip claims that she had a character in the book named Tanya, but this... So she probably... um she probably auditioned for the role of Lulu, but being a low, low Lulu, um, but was probably so bad, like she was saying, that maybe they was like, no. And so, he, so then his next thing would be, okay, so now we, you know, we're going into production. We're already filming. I'm going to try to get her fired. So they ain't going to have no other choice but to hire my girlfriend as a backup. Because who else she going to, you know, we, we can't go through the whole casting process again because we... We waste, we burning money now. We rolling production, film is being spent. You know, money is being spent. So if I get her fired, then they'll just have to hire my girlfriend as a quick understudy by default because, you know, there's no time left. Hit the thumbs up button. Character was based on Anna Z. Chase. And baby, don't you know that she implied that Anna Z. Chase slept with one of them doggone directors or maybe even two of those directors to get a role in The Mac. Baby, wow. it went further to say that Anna Z was looking stupid when the movie The Mac actually came out and she found out that most of her role was on the chopping block. <laughs> like the part of her on screen was very, very small. Then Carol went on to say wow. that everybody on the set of the movie The Mac did drugs, including her. Baby, she said it was so that. much powder around that every time somebody said action, everybody had to kind of pat their nose just to get the white off of it. Then mm. they say she told a story I can see about that. In the 70s? and Anna Zett Chase sitting in a room with Richard Pryor. They were all snorting. They were all getting high. And then she said Richard Pryor jumped up and was like, I want to kill somebody. I'm going to kill somebody. And so she was like, her and Anna Zett took off running out of the room. Baby, why she said she looked back and Richard was running after them. But instead of getting them, he ran past them and ran up to the director Michael Campus and uh, <laughs> punched Michael Kempis in the face, knocking him out cold. The folks say all- <laughs> So you gotta think, this is in the early 70s, at the, begin- for, ba- the very beginning of the 70s. Pe- see, right now, if somebody pulled out some coke and started doing coke in the middle of a party, people would be like, what the hell are you doing? If you did that today, people would think, what the, look at this coke, this is, ooh, what the hell's wrong with you? You know what I'm saying? Back then, coke was like chewing bubble gum. In the early, for some reason, when cocaine came out, it wasn't no big deal. Everybody, people, people would do coke at a kid's birthday party. It was like nothing. 
Hit the thumbs up button. All the bodyguards on the set of the Mac came running in, and you know they pulled Richard Pryor off of Michael Campus. But later on that <laughs> night, Richard Pryor was still high because he never stopped snorting. So this man ended up finding the hotel that the producer of the Mac was staying in, <laughs> a man by the name of Harvey Bernhard. Richard broke into this man's hotel room and started hitting this man across the belly with a metal rod that he had stuffed in a sock. And these are just some of the stories. Like I said, this is a small snippet. Of story, she said that Pam Greer slept around with a group of men who were of a certain ethnic group. And these men mm. were supposed to pay Pam Greer a large sum of money. But after they got through with her, they threw her a $5 bill. So anyway, Carol is sitting around spitefully mm. writing this book. Everybody is finding out about it all over Hollywood. So other black actors don't. Yeah, but she didn't. You could tell she was already had a problem with it. With Pam Greer. So, you know, how we know you telling the truth? You didn't like, y'all was beefing. Y'all didn't like each other when y'all first, when y'all were young anyway. So it's like, how we know you telling the truth that, you know what I mean? I want to work thumbs up, with her anymore. So casting directors stopped casting her. And so in her quest to get back at people, now she was messing her career up even more. And because her career was messing up even more, she was starting to get more and more depressed and she started to delve more and more into drugs. She also started to party a whole lot and spend money that she did not have. I'll tell you how bad things got for Carol. Her last movie, Abby, was in 1974. From 1974 all the way until 1979, that is five years, Carol didn't have any work. And it really seemed like the movie that she got in 1979 was just somebody kind of trying to throw her a little bone. It was really, really a horrible time for Carol Speed. And right after that movie that she made in 1979, she ended up leaving Hollywood and going to live with Sly Stone. Carol stayed with Sly for at least three years before she decided to move away and clean herself up, mm. you know, and get her life back together. But unfortunately for Carol, people hadn't forgot about her book, and also she had been going away from the screen for too long so she mm. was not able to retain the acting career that she used to have i mean she what did this, get roles she throughout the 80s and 90s and even the early 2000s oh, but these back, were very on, a large sum of money but after they got through with her they threw her a five dollar bill so anyway carol is sitting around spitefully writing this book everybody is finding out about it all over hollywood so other black actors don't want to work with her anymore oh. so casting directors stop casting mm. her and so in her quest to get back at people, now she was messing her career up even more. And because her career was messing up even more, she was starting to get more and more depressed and she started to delve more and more into drugs. She oh, wow. also started to party a whole lot and spend money that she did not have. I'll tell you how bad things got for Carol. Her last movie, Abby, was in 1974. From 1974 all the way until 1979, that is five years, Carol didn't have any work. And it really seemed like the movie that she got in 1979 was just somebody kind of trying to throw her a little bone. It was mm. really, really a horrible time for Carol Speed. And right after that movie that she made in 1979, she ended up leaving Hollywood and going to live with Sly Stone. Carol oh, stayed Lord. with Sly for at least three years before she decided to move away and clean herself up. That was the worst place for her to move in. I just realized that. She said, it said Sly Stone. He was a, the, back then, shit, the 70s, early 80s, he was the biggest drug head. Hit that thumbs up button. You know, and get her life back together. But unfortunately for Carol, people hadn't forgot about her book. And also she had been going away from the screen for too long. So she was not able to retain the acting career that she used to have. I mean, she did get roles throughout the 80s and 90s and even the early 2000s. But these were very small roles with a few lines or sometimes she wouldn't have any lines at all. Black, and nobody knows ball. for sure or nobody that I found knows for sure if Carol ended up suffering another mental breakdown but a lot of people speculate that she did because in the early 2000s a uh, rumor has it that carol started to speak nonsense they said that she no longer claimed her mother or her father or even any of her siblings you know she started to say that she was born in germany and her father was dwight eisenhower the president dwight eisenhower <laughs> some people even said she claimed it. she was a german princess uh gossip claims that she started to tell people that she lived 
lived with Marvin Gaye for a while and actually she helped Marvin Gaye write the song Sexual Healing. She said that she ended up winning a Grammy for writing Sexual Healing. You know, she just started saying a lot of bizarre things. And rumor has it, it was she while Carol was in this mind frame that Quentin Tarantino <coughs> had actually reached out to her to be a part of his Jackie Brown movie. But I think that he saw that mm. Carol may have not been all that well and also I think Carol was upset that Pam Greer was once again uh, had booked the lead role right. over her. So uh, Quentin Tarantino ended up dropping her from the project. She mm. ended up opening a Twitter account and not only that, she ended up opening an account on a website called The Arthur's Dean to post even more bizarre things. Like saying the actor D. Irville Martin was murdered when um, it's alleged he died of a heart attack. She also could not stand Spike Lee. I think she also said something about Nancy Pelosi maybe stalking her or Nancy Pelosi blocking her from getting email. Something about government. It. She lost her mind. This this Hollywood, man, you better, man, this should have make your ass crazy, dude. For real. She lost it. Wow, that's cold blooded. I've seen it out here too. People being in this Hollywood shit too long and don't make it. They start to lose their mind. You know what I'm saying? Hit that thumbs up button. Agents coming inside of her house, and I also think she thought people were spying on her. So I don't know. You know, I can't name everything here, but on her Twitter account, there are so many posts with so many things that Carol said. And it actually appeared that she posted on Twitter all the way up until the year 2014, when she mm. suddenly dropped out of sight. And maybe some family and friends stepped in and started to get her help. You know, I don't know, but it does seem like she started to have a psychological mental problem. Since yeah. Carol Speed kind of dropped out of the public eye, I couldn't find any more traces. She had she had delusions of grandeur. That's what that was. She was having delusions of grandeur. <coughs> she was, she was a uh, psycho. <coughs> To her. The only thing that is left to say is I believe she was alleged to have had one son, but unfortunately it seems like he passed away before she passed away. Oh, In the man. 90s, she ended up moving to Atlanta, Georgia, which is where she stayed for several years until she ended up moving to Muskogee, Oklahoma, where she ended up passing away on January the 14th, 2022, at the age of 76 years old. And you know what's mm, crazy about this? She actually passed away 13 days after one of her arch nemesis. It was uh, Max Julian. He oh. passed away on January the 1st, 2022. So oh, wow. Carol Speed's yeah, story oh. was definitely kind of strange, but I do think it kind of puts to rest some of the conspiracy theories. I know one of That's them was the theory right that she ended up writing that tell-all book and then <sighs> somebody did something to her, basically to mess up her mental. And then the other theory was that making the movie Abby, since it was so demonic, that that is what messed up her mental health. But like I said, after researching what? and digging, it really just seems like the problem of her mental health just progressed with age. So yeah. anyways, guys, this is the old Hollywood scandalous tale. That's crazy, man. And so it's very uh, clear. That is Ashley Says So. Y'all can check out her YouTube channel right here on YouTube. Very interesting story she has on here, man. Another good one, Ashley. Good job. Good job. Um, so I think that uh, this Carol Speed, uh, I've heard of her. I didn't know. I remember her from Ad. I remember we used to rent. This is back when we used to rent movies. You see, you used to have to go to the store and go rent a movie. Now you can just rent them on your TV, but man, this is this is back in the blockbuster days when I was a kid. And um we we would go, me and my friends would go and we, and we would rent old 70s movies cuz we thought, you know, some of it was kind of fly and, sm and smooth, but a lot of that stuff we used to clown, like how they would talk and stuff like The Mac or like JD's Revenge Cooley High was good though. Cooley High is one of the movies from the seventies that it's like an all time classic. Cooley High, um, but for the most part, a lot of the movies we we used to we used to rent every other weekend. We were bored, teenagers. Me and my friends, we would get the Mac and we would just you know just clown the movies. And one of the movies we rented was Abby, and that was about. I remember watching that as a teenager, Abby, and she was about this the crazy this, this this black lady in the hood. That got possessed by by demons and stuff. Yeah, it's pretty it's pretty cheesy, you know. Um, anyway, what do y'all think about this video, man? Leave your comments and subscribe to Charles and Israel. Appreciate it.